Hello, St. Luke Altar Guild. This is Pastor Bristol. I'm here at the altar this morning. I wanna just do a quick video to show you how to set up for communion if you're the person who's setting up before we have a communion service. So there's a couple different claws and different vessels that come out and I'm gonna run through them just so you can see the order that they get stacked in here. Um, underneath everything on the altar, we have these plastic sheets that go down just to protect our pyramids. Um, and then on top, the first thing that you set is this big square cloth. This is called the corporal. Uh, when I was in seminary, one of my teachers used to say this is like the tablecloth that we lay down for our picnic. So you set the tablecloth first. The next thing that goes up here on the altar is the chalice. I brought two different chalices here. This is a pouring chalice, so it has the little lip that you can pour from. This is a dipping chalice. It doesn't have a little lip. Um, but whichever chalice we're using, it can just go right in the center. Sometimes if we're using a small plate like this, this is called a patten. Um, if we were using the wafers, there's a big wafer that can sit on top of the patten. When we use the big bread, it doesn't quite fit up here, so I don't use it. So if we're using wafers, the big serving wafer might sit here, and then the, the patten can just sit on top of the chalice, just like that. So on top of our big square tablecloth, we set our chalice in the center. Then what goes on top of the chalice is another little cloth. It's folded into a rectangle like this. You might think of this like the napkin for our picnic. Um, if you've ever been up here serving out of the chalice, you know it's helpful to have a cloth to wipe up any spills, particularly when you're using the pouring chalice. That's called a purificator. It can sit over the chalice here so that it's ready to serve. Next on top comes this square piece. It's hard, it's not floppy. This, uh, this is called the pall, the same word as we use for a funeral pall that covers a casket or an urn. Here it's covering um, the chalice. It's like it's covering the body of Christ. Uh, so here the pall goes on top. The nice part about this is that it helps the whole thing hold the shape when we put on the last part, which is the veil. So the veil is another square cloth, kind of like the corporal. It's a little fancier, perhaps, than the corporal, but also just a plain white square cloth. And you, when you set it around, I make a little tent. So uh, uh, one of the corners comes out to the front, comes out to each of the sides, comes out to the rear. And the nice thing about having a pall is that we can make a nice little, uh, it keeps the shape nice and firm. The other thing you might see up here is a book holder. <clears throat> I use that to put the missal on. The, this big red book is a version of the hymnal, just a large print version for the presider to follow when leading the liturgy. So that sets the table uh, up here on the altar. I'm gonna take it apart and show you one more time the order of everything, and then we'll go over to the credence table and talk about where we store the elements, the bread and the wine, before they come to the altar. <clears throat> so on the top, we had the veil. Underneath here we have the pall. It's that hard piece that helps it keep its shape. Then this was the purificator, purificator kind of like our napkin for serving. It goes right over the chalice. Then on the, on the bottom sits the chalice here, whether, whichever chalice we're using. And then underneath everything is our, our picnic tablecloth. This is called the corporal for the body of Christ. That corporal word means from body. And then here at St. Luke, sometimes we, um, we use these protectors. If you have one of these, it can just lay underneath and protect um, the claws that are already on the altar. So that's the order of how things are set up here on the table. So then over here on this little table uh, that's underneath the hymn board is where we store some of the elements. During the offering, when it's time to set the table, you've seen me come over to this spot and pick up these elements and bring them to the table so that we can kind of set the feast for everyone to come. So I just wanted to mention that right here is where our bread and wine get stored until it's time for communion. This is a flagon. There, there are a couple different sets that St. Luke has, but this flagon on Sunday morning, I fill the wine in here. So uh, this will go on this table. This is also where we put the bread. There are a few different containers for the bread. If we're using um, the wafers, then we might wanna use a bigger kind of bowl-like container. If we're using a loaf of bread, that's what I brought here. Here's a loaf of bread, it's wrapped in saran wrap. Um, it can just go on a larger plate like this. Um, and I like to just cover it with another cloth, just kind of uh, to protect the elements out of respect for the holiness of the meal. So I just lay it over the, over the bread like so. 
Then one more piece that we've been doing more recently since COVID is that we have this other tray. Um, if you remember, we've had these little pre-packaged bread and wine. Um, so we, we put a few of them here in case that's a more comfortable way for people to take communion. This is also a great spot to put a couple clean, empty individual cups if we're using those for communion. So um, I uh, set, this is just a little tray, any kind of tray would work for this. And I usually set that here also. Um, out of respect for the fact that this is also part of the bread and wine, even though it looks a little bit differently, I usually cover that with a cloth also. So those are the pieces that are here on the credence table, the wine and the bread that then get carried over to the table. So if you're setting up for Sunday morning, you can put an empty flagon, you can put an empty plate. Um, and if you're, if you're able to just hop back to the fridge in the kitchen and make sure uh, that one of the loaves of bread is thawing, that's great if we're using bread that week. If we're using um, the host, the, the little uh, wafers, um, you don't have to thaw those. They're stored in the sacristy. So now the only other final part I'm going to show you is uh, how to set up the cups. All right, I'm here in the sacristy uh, where all of the vessels are kept um, and all of the linens are kept in a drawer here. Uh, but one other thing we might need to put out if we're using individual cups are these stacks of trays. So um, underneath each of these stacks of trays, uh, they, uh, they can store those little individual cups. If we're using glass ones, uh, you can stock this with glass ones. If we're using plastic, we do also have plastic available, but we've been trying to move to glass um, if we have a volunteer who's able to help us wash them after the service. So usually we need uh, a tray for each side, each side of the sanctuary, the, each um, of the set of pews. Uh, so you'll find those back here. And then uh, when you put out one of the sets of glasses, we also then put out an empty tray next to it so that when folks are done after they've rece received communion, as they return to their seats, they can drop their used cup um, in one of these trays. So we, as you can see, we have a big full set of them. Um, so that's where the trays are and they can just sit on those tables that are at the front of the pew so that people can pick up a cup as they come up to communion and then they can drop up, drop off a cup as they return. Thank you for all of your help getting us set up for Sundays, um, setting up uh, the, the pieces that go on the table, the pieces that go to the side on the credence table, and then in here uh, you can pick up the cups that get set out as well. So thank you for all of your work. You make this possible. Um, you're part of the, of the servers who, who set the table um, and prepare the feast that those who come might experience Christ's grace. Thank you.